I interviewed 20 people who all took only around two and a half months to break into IT with an average starting salary of around $51,000 per year. All of them had unrelated jobs beforehand from police officer to FedEx driver to warehouse worker. And today we're going to go over a list of things that you can do to achieve the same results for exactly $0. And I will be providing links for everything I talk about in this video, including a sample resume, sample portfolio, the spreadsheet of the interviewees with links to the interviews and other resources to help you along your way. And I do want to say before we get started, if you're wanting to get into IT, it's completely possible for you. If you're one of those people who are thinking like, oh, am I smart enough or something? IT is like a normal job and it's well within the realm of possibility of the average person. All it takes is a bit of planning and execution. And this video is going to cover the planning. So it's basically up to you to execute it. You can absolutely do it. It's just a matter of time and energy. So the first thing on our list, it's very basic and very easy, but it's also really important is consistency. And as Benjamin Franklin said, energy and persistence conquer all things. And this is very, very true. So it's really important that you're consistent. I would consider S tier consistency being like three hours a day of studying, doing labs, building your portfolio, all the rest of the stuff I talk about on this list. If you can spend at least three hours per day doing it, you're going to have results way faster than the average person. If you think about somebody who spends a good 30 minutes per day versus somebody who spends two and a half hours per day, the person who spends two and a half hours per day will meet their goal five times faster than the person who spends only 30 minutes. It's really, really important that you remain consistent throughout your journey with whatever you're doing, whether or not it's breaking into IT or literally anything else. So be consistent. At least three hours a day, I would consider S tier. That's a lot. More than three hours, you're going to start getting tired and experiencing diminishing returns. The next step is to develop a basic understanding of information technology. And the easiest and cheapest way to do this, at least in English, is to go over Professor Messer's A plus course. Just simply watch the videos. You don't need to stress and go super in depth taking notes and all of that stuff. Just watch the videos understand what he's saying, and then move on to the next video. A good alternative to this would be the Google IT Support Professional Program. You don't need to go through the whole course and get the certification or anything. I would recommend watching the technical support section, the networking section, and the operating system section. But beyond that, you don't really need anything else to work in entry-level IT. Of course, you can get bonus points for actually getting A plus or actually finishing the Google certification, but it's not necessary. And we'll talk about different things that you can do for your resume if you just learn the stuff but don't take the exam in the end, but we'll get to that soon. This is really important because when you get to the technical section, it's going to make things easier if you have context and understanding of IT in general. The next thing on the list that you need to cover is to develop some technical skills with some hands-on activities. There's going to be three things on the list. The first thing you need to cover is cloud computing. The second thing is Active Directory. And the third thing is ticketing systems. And the reason behind this is pretty much everywhere that you're going to work is probably going to have some exposure to the cloud in some way, like some resources or they're using using Azure or AWS for something. So cloud computing is really important. Ticketing system is just a good way to keep track of problems and understand what's happening in the environment and kind of prioritize work. And Active Directory is used for provisioning users and configuring access to different resources. And these things are all over the place. So for example, if you search on Indeed for Azure, there's gonna be a whole bunch of hits. If you search for ticketing, if you search for Active Directory, these things are gonna have a ton of hits as well. And pretty much every job, like every job, especially entry level job that you run into is going to have these three things on them. So I'll put a bunch of resources in the description for how you can go about learning each one of these things. I always ask people at the end of the interview, like what part of the course was most helpful for you when it actually came time to interview. And most of the people will say the Active Directory Lab. And then number two is definitely ticketing systems. Those things are absolutely everywhere. So it's really important to hit those really hard. If I think back, every single job I've worked at have used these three things. The cloud, ticketing systems, and Active Directory. It doesn't matter if it was help desk, sysadmin, software engineering, or even some kind of security job. Every single job has used these three things. So it's really important that you get exposure to these early on. The next thing that you need to worry about is developing some good paper experience for your resume. And by paper experience, I mean something that you can actually put on your resume or your LinkedIn in the experience section that employers can look at and be like, okay, this person has experience. There's a couple different ways to deal with this. Um, my company actually offers an internship so you can look into that but if you just want to do something on your own a really good strategy is to kind of make your own company like you can go out and register one if you want um, this costs money 
or you can just make it up in your head and name it something and then put it on your resume and then you can go out and make some proper content like on YouTube or something, publish that content, maybe make some kind of blog around it and then put it on your resume like under your company name as IT content creator or IT training material content creator or IT trainer something like this and then if you have something tangible that people can go to like a website that they can actually see what you did as well as your content because your business like doesn't have to make a bunch of money to be considered a legitimate business but as long as there's something there that's like outlined really nicely with some nice visuals this counts as experience and you can definitely put it on your resume there's going to be a section where we talk about resume and portfolio and all that but that's coming up next so as far as content ideas you can just take the three technical things that you learned about before like cloud computing ticketing systems and Active Directory and kind of remake your own content around those. Make sure it's decent, upload it to YouTube, make a business page, put the links, put the necessary links on there, and then you can put that on your resume and you're good to go. The next thing you want to worry about is your portfolio. And there's a lot of different ways you can create a portfolio and a lot of different places that you can put it. But in our sample, check the link in the description. We make a portfolio on GitHub with some nice visuals to cover the different projects we did. So when you're doing your hands-on practice with Azure and ticketing systems and Active Directory, you can literally just make a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how you set all of those things up. Just make it really pretty with some nice visuals and an explanation of what you did put that in your github portfolio and put the link to your portfolio on your resume also put a link in the description that covers how to actually create this portfolio as well so check that out this is really really important for a couple of different reasons first of all if a human is actually looking at your resume and considering you they can look at your portfolio and get a sense for how you work and the type of things that you can create and your understanding of different systems also if you're doing an interview like you're on zoom or something it's possible that the interviewer asks you a question about what is your experience with active directory and you can can be like oh i actually have a project on that can i show you it a bit and then you can kind of share your screen and then show your nice visual active directory project and talk it over and kind of go over it with your interviewer. This is like a lot of points and it really helps a lot when you're interviewing. It really conveys that you have at least some kind of passion for what you're doing and you understand things at a, at least a basic level. So portfolio is really, really important. It seems like kind of a contrived scenario, but I've done this many times where I'm like on the phone with the interviewer and they ask me something and I'm like, oh, I have a project similar to that. Can I show it to you? They absolutely love it. And as someone who hires people, if somebody did that to me, I would love it as well. And a lot of my other viewers and students my courses have literally done the same thing and it really really works and the next thing you need to do is produce a really squared away resume and this is much more important than people think it is because this matters it matters it's going to make a difference in like if you have to submit 50 applications versus 500 versus a thousand so your resume is really important but your resume needs to be like really consistent in terms of grammar and formatting and it needs to be easily readable by both humans and ATS. So you shouldn't be putting a bunch of weird stuff like columns and like images and like all the stuff that makes it hard for a computer to read your resume. And it should be ordered in such a way that it's really easy for humans to digest. I can talk about this a lot and I've reviewed a lot of resumes. So I have a good sense uh, of what's good and like what's not really optimal. And you're also gonna have to like change your resume for each job that you apply to, but we'll get to that in a moment. The next thing you want to do is really optimize your LinkedIn profile and take this one seriously as well. You want to have a really nice profile picture. There's a lot of apps that you can use on the web that will kind of crop a picture out and put a nice background on it. Just make sure it's like a nice headshot, right? And then make sure all of your LinkedIn is filled out and optimized as much as you can. There's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube that cover how to do this. And then you want to strive to get at least 500 connections in your related field. So you can connect to me with LinkedIn as well as a bunch of other people like maybe IT recruiters or people who work in help desk. Just try to make a lot of connections and strive for 500, but don't spam every single day because you're gonna get like shadow banned or something or they're gonna flag your account. So try and try to connect to a lot of people, but maybe not more than like 20 per day or something like this, but just work to make a really nice optimized clean LinkedIn profile. And for your LinkedIn profile, for your headline, put the job that you actually want to do, like IT help analyst or IT professional or something like this. And I don't really recommend using the open to work like thing around your name. Recruiters are really weird about that. And there's like a lot of weird controversy and they, they're they always saying like, oh, like if you put that, maybe you come off as desperate or something, which I think is really lame by the way, but I just recommend don't putting that on there and then just use the title that you want for your headline. And then next, 
you want to do some proper interview practice questions. And the way to do this correctly is to practice reading the question and then practice formulating your own answer to it and then answer out loud with your own voice. And I'm gonna include 15 practice behavioral questions that you can go over, 15 technical questions, and then when you get an interview for any given job, you want to dump the job description in ChatGPT and tell it to come up with 15 practice interview questions for you. So you have like 15 more questions specific to the job. It's really, really important to practice speaking out loud and articulating your answers to interview questions because when you actually go to the interview, it's gonna be really, really hard for you to say anything because of nerves and, and all of that other stuff. But if you've practiced answering questions, it's gonna be much easier when you actually get into the interview, even if they don't ask you questions that you've practiced before, if that makes sense. And bear in mind, there's always something that you can say other than I don't know. If they ask you some kind of question that you don't know the answer to, you can always say something like, oh, I've heard about that. I haven't gotten into it yet, but it's definitely on my list. Or you can say something like, oh, I haven't worked with that yet, but I've worked with this other thing that's just, which is like really, really similar. And you can kind of frame your answer that way. But as long as you answer in some way that's like no, or like I don't know, or something like this, um, it's going to be good for you. And this is also really, really important when it comes to interviewing, especially for entry level IT. Soft skill and personality and like the way you talk to people and appear is probably more important than the technical skill section. So if you have like a good personality and you're honest about the stuff that you don't understand and you're just really personable and you show that you're willing to learn stuff, this goes a really long way, especially in, in entry level IT because entry level IT from the technical standpoint is really easy to train, like literally anyone can do it. So if you're trainable and flexible and you can take criticism well, this is gonna help you a lot when it comes to interviewing. So just remember that, like soft skill goes a long way in entry level IT. I recommend all my IT students to do this and the people who do it, it helps them a lot when they come to interview. So just trust me on this and practice saying your stuff out loud. I remember when I was trying to apply for my very first IT job, I was super, super poor and I got an interview and I was currently making like $10 an hour part-time but the IT job was $50,000 a year US which is like life changing money for me especially at the time so I got a list of interview questions that I kind of anticipated would be asked and I would go on walks and I would just practice articulating my answers to those questions and it helps quite a bit when you actually get into the interview it will free up so much brain power if you've practiced answering the questions beforehand so I highly recommend it I'm, I'm glad that I did because I ended up passing that interview so please just practice articulating the answers to the interview questions questions, it helps a lot. And then finally, it's time for the job hunt and your job hunt execution. And this portion is really, really important. And this can make the difference between having to submit 50 applications versus 500 versus 1000 applications. So just pay attention to this part. So I basically made a whole video that talks about how to do this as well as a spreadsheet that you can use to track your applications. But basically, when you apply to jobs, you should always be using a unique resume for each job. Uh, in this video, I kind of talk about how you can make a unique resume and how you keep track of it and use ChatGPT and all that. So I'd recommend a unique resume with unique technologies and skills section that matches that job and try to incorporate things from that job description into your own experience area on your resume as well. And when you have a nice squared away resume that's specific to that job, work to try to find where the job listing is on the internet. Like I don't recommend applying only in LinkedIn or like the job board or only in Indeed. I would apply in Indeed, but I would also try to find the source listing like on the company website and apply there as well. And then also, if you can, I would try to find somebody on LinkedIn who might be related to the job and just reach out to them and say that you applied to the job and you're really interested in it. And if there's anything they can do to help you or any advice they can give, you're more than happy to receive it. And if you do that for five jobs a day or over the course of 100 days, that's 500 super high quality applications. And that's gonna help you a lot more than doing like quick apply on LinkedIn and Indeed. So I don't even recommend doing quick apply at all, right? Take your time and do a super high quality application, treat it seriously, and then you're gonna get interviews way faster than if you're just shooting out resumes and applications. People often don't understand like the amount of volume of applications you need to put out before you start getting traction and interview. So it's really, really important to make sure your resume and your applications are as high quality as possible. And 20 applications is not really a lot. Like 50 is not really a lot either. Because if you look at the spreadsheet with the 20 interviewees on it, like the average number of applications that was put out is about 230 or like 250 or something. And these are all people who got jobs and like uh, with an average 
salary of around 51, 50K US. So you expect to put out a decent number of applications, but if the higher quality your application is and the smarter you are with it, the less applications you're gonna to have to put out, if that makes sense. So don't get discouraged after like 10 or 20 or something. Make sure everything is as high quality as it can possibly be. Be prepared to put out a few hundred applications. In that spreadsheet with all 10 interviewees, at the end of their interview, I basically asked them like, what is your advice for people trying to break into IT? And they gave a whole bunch of different advice, but the top three advice that I received from most people is apply really aggressively because job hunting is a numbers game. So I'll shoot for like, five really high quality applications per day, maybe 10 if you want to go really hard. The second biggest piece of advice was gain hands-on experience, redo the labs, build a portfolio and practice troubleshooting. And the third piece of advice is prepare thoroughly for your interview. So master the behavioral portion of interviews. You can look up star method and then practice formulating your own answers to the interview questions, kind of like we just talked about. So these are the top three things. Apply a lot do enough hands-on experience, and then properly practice for your interviews before you go into them. And if you're interested, all these people went through the IT course that I teach. It basically covers everything I talked about in this video, and it really holds your hand as you walk through it. So basically the only difference is if you did this stuff on your own, you could, do, you could definitely execute it for free, um, but it will probably take a lot longer. Whereas if you get the course, it really like spoon feeds you everything like, all the ticketing system stuff, like the Azure Active Directory Lab, all that stuff is like really spoon fed to you. And then there's like a community behind it as well. So if you want to go through it for free, um, just use the resources in the description. I'll, I'll kind of show you like where to find the different stuff and how to go through it. But if you want to just like go through the course, um, you can just do that as well. All these interviews are real. All the people are real. You can find them on LinkedIn and stuff. And they did a really good job executing and breaking into IT. So good job to them. And then let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, again, you can definitely get into IT. It's just a matter of execution and time and, and discipline and all of that. It's basically like, it's definitely within the realm of possibility for everyone. So thanks for watching and good luck.